सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड इन यू एच वी थ्री येस्टरडे वी केम टू द कंक्लूजन ऑफ मॉड्यूल थ्री वेर वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द ह्यूमन बींग इन सम डिटेल येस्टरडे वी our focus was on sources of happiness which we've been talking about for a couple of days now how the human being is always looking for happiness because that is a need of the self so yesterday somebody mentioned about survival so one is to survive somehow struggle but that is not enough for the human being in the animals it might work to just you know have um food for the body and to survive that might work for them but for the human being that is not sufficient human being has this constant search for happiness and so if we are not able to understand how to get it from within we start looking for it outside and therefore we try to get this happiness you know through the body we start with that deep sanskar that deep preconditioning that we are the body and then through the body sense organs i keep trying to get a pleasurable sensation for happiness but because my need for happiness is continuous and this sensation can only be temporary i am not able to quench my this thirst for happiness so i keep trying to get this happiness in bits and pieces from time to time but then when i can indulge in the happiness i feel excited i feel nice and when that sensation is not available to me i feel unhappy i crave for it and i try to escape that unhappiness by looking at some other activity which might give me happiness and this cycle keeps going this is a loop we get caught up in that we are not able to see the happiness within we are trying to get it from outside either through the body sensation or through feeling from the others that they should give me respect they should talk to me nice this so and so must behave in this way with me i am senior he is junior how can he talk to me like that and so on so many things so we keep complaining because we are unhappy about it that focus has to shift from looking for that happiness outside looking for that happiness from getting the right feeling from somebody else to my focus on what is my role what do i need to do and one way to do it we said is to go through the exercise 1 and 2 where you can start observing your own feeling start referring to your own natural acceptance which is there in everyone we just have to pay attention to it refer to it rather than just trying to seek answers outside try to pay attention inside and when you do that slowly this turmoil within starts coming down 
because now your feelings, your thoughts are slowly coming in line with your natural acceptance as you can keep paying attention to it. And in this process, we slowly awaken to the higher activities. So it will take time. It takes time for everybody. It will take time for all of us. Important thing is, at least we know where to go. And that major shift of looking for happiness outside and now coming within, paying attention within, so that we can ensure our happiness from within and then pay attention outside also. So all that is doable, it's possible. If we keep going step by step, therefore the exercises. So we'll conclude the, we were talking about, you know, we had given some assignment, so we'll talk about that for a bit and then we'll go on to the next module about understanding nature and existence. So um, for the self-reflection, we had spoken of this to check if we are trying to get happiness from outside. And when we are not able to get this happiness, are we trying to escape from this unhappiness by moving to other activities? We already talked about this yesterday. So we said you can list down the methods you've been trying for ensuring happiness. Can you see the possibility of continuity of happiness through these methods? What could you conclude from your investigation? Is, the, is it that happiness has to be the basic nature of the self? I have to ensure it from within? Or can I derive it through the influence of others outside? So this we had to reflect on throughout the day yesterday, closely observing our activities and seeing what is happening. So if anybody would like to share their observations, we can talk about them. Namaskar, Madam. Namaskar to all. Namaskar. Madam, in continuation to uh, my sharing uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. I conclude uh, that uh, the happiness not has to be, it is the nature of the self. And mm -hmm. it can be derived through, I mean, it cannot be, it cannot be derived through the influence of uh, others outside. It, it is there itself. If we try to derive from outside means we are going away from it. That's what I observed. Mm -hmm. uh, by uh, because uh, in my experience uh, I shared yesterday because when I refer to natural acceptance which is already there in me and others then only uh, the deviation from happiness what can I say uh, that is minimized so if I uh, refer to natural acceptance which already is there in me then only I can be continuously happy the more I do and the more I can be in happiness, what I observed, madam. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Uh, thank you, madam. This we have to bring in our practical living. So you'll notice that because we may not have the com competence right now to ensure happiness all the time within, we keep coming outward to look for happiness every now and then outside. It is certainly okay to use the sensation for what, you know, to find out about the reality, about the outside. It is also okay to um, see my relationship with the other and participate in that relationship. But all the while, one, one focus will be inside. What is my feeling? What is my thought? Is it in line with natural acceptance or not? 
because that is what is going to decide my happiness or unhappiness. So when I'm ensuring my feeling and thought inside me, then it becomes simpler. Now, with this happiness within, I can rightly evaluate whatever I am looking at on the outside. And slowly, I am able to observe things the way they are. And with my happiness within, I can see the pain, the suffering of the other. I have concern for the other. I have compassion for the other. And my next um, project becomes how to help the other. Now that I am secure in my happiness, how can I help the other? That comes as a natural sequel to this. And it happens, it flows in a very natural manner as long as I am in that process. But if I don't pay attention inside, then things keep going the way they are going. Yes. True. Uh, Madam, thank you. Madam, exercise three facilitates the process of reaching that you uh, showed uh, yesterday. But... Uh, Exercise three, we did not do, madam. That's what we have to develop our competence. Oh, oh, oh that uh, okay, okay, madam. Because for exercise three, we need to be able to directly observe the space. Mm -hmm. Very, very subtle. Okay, okay. Reality, no? So right now, first we have to develop our competence with exercise one and two. Pay more and more attention inward. And then once our confidence is increased, then eventually we will come to exercise three at some point. Okay. And when uh, the higher activities are awakened for a long time and our lower activities are guided by most of the time uh, with the higher activities, then we can easily do that now, madam? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, madam. Uh, good, good morning. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, I, I personally feel very strongly that continuous happiness can be derived by helping others and understanding others. This, this is uh, uh, in, in long run and in continuous, it is helping. It is really sustainable. I just give one simple example of last few days. I had registered for one content-based program with NIDTTR. And I was the first person and I was not getting a communication whether the program is happening or not. Suddenly, one week before the organizer phoned me, sir, we are converting this program from physical to online because we have less number of participants. I said, no problem, nothing to worry. Otherwise, I would have loved to visit Bhopal and enjoy there. But I said, fine, I adjusted to that what you call in spiritual language, Sukar Bhav, means what is there, be adjust with that. That is one. Then I conveyed this, conveyed to my other colleagues that I have registered for this program. Like, you know, in the college, friends tell us, I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm doing So my two lady staff members, I told this, though it's a vacation, but I, I have registered for this program. Both the staff members immediately registered. Sir, ne kya hoga to acha hoga. I said, no, understand it. Register the program with natural understanding. Still, they, are, they registered and the, yesterday that program completed it. Then I realized that, okay, let us share the experience. So I volunteered to deliver two sessions in that. One session specifically prepared the PPT on the area which I have expertise. And the organizers gave me uh, to present it. So at the end, they, they were really very uh, thankful and happy. So seeing them happy, I was happy. So this is my uh, little submission here at this stage. Yeah. Nice. Here we are seeing, you know, how to help the other. So what you mentioned, certainly it will give us happiness to help the other. 
but that is not enough acha okay. Okay. okay we we also need the entire um, knowledge of the existence as it is correct okay so yes certainly it is very very you know you can see it that when you help the others you are able to get your happiness seems to get magnified yes but a lot of times we have some very deep rooted sanskars so in yes. one in one ah. setup things may look very fine and i am doing good but ah. in another setup there may be a problem even with relationship even with understanding the other sometimes with acceptance Sorry. when it is something that i give more importance to so okay. you will find that uh, to really have that continuity of happiness without a break correct definitely we need to go all the way to realization and have the knowledge of the entire existence the way it is correct and that is what we are working for nice yes. very nice sharing thank, thank you. you thank you thank you good morning ma'am good morning uh, uh, i think happiness uh, continuous happiness we get uh, when we have a very good right understanding when we go deep within ourselves and uh, we understand that we are uh, unlimited uh, soul uh, and we have to come out of our uh, limitedness because what we have accumulated uh, during the long period of uh, the ha- uh, heritage and the place we live and the time space everything it involves so we have to come out of that unlimitedness then next is uh, we should have right understanding in whatever work we do and we have to understand the competence that's how when we live with uh, other coexistence we have to understand the coexistence uh, and uh, uh, happiness is one which is unchanging and it does not change with time or space so that is my understanding ma'am yeah so when we say right understanding it doesn't mm. have to be for specific things mm. right understanding already means that i have understood everything mm. there is to know in this existence mm. so yes. with that i already have the knowledge mm. of my participation my role my relationship with others the self organization that is there in every mm. unit so there is immense clarity about day to day activity mm. these become very small things that uh, you know the resolution seems very obvious those results mm. will come mm. you know almost spontaneously within us we won't have to go looking at specific um activities specific skills we can certainly develop the skills but if mm-hmm. we have the right understanding in the base mm-hmm. then we have clarity about what to give more importance to what to give less importance to how to go about things no mm, yes yes what you are describing mm-hmm. is also true but we have to see it in a bigger picture in a yes. more holistic way true yes. yes nice today we'll start with module 4 lecture 16 in module 4 like i said we are going to talk about understanding nature and existence we finished with the human being finished with the information about the human being our work will continue as a human being my exploration within will continue we will do this lecture 16 as a just a introduction to the existence as coexistence and then we'll come back to step 7 of exercise 2 where we had left off yes so yeah so if you look at this this is just a brief recap of what we already spoke about that we have this need for continuous happiness this is a need of the self 
we also learned that this need of the self can be fulfilled by the activities of the self. One doesn't have to be dependent on the outside. We may not have realized that earlier. We may not have been able to see that earlier. But as we keep paying attention inside and as we keep referring to our natural acceptance, we find more and more that this happiness can be obtained through the activities of the self. Ultimately, having completeness of right understanding and that guiding our lower activities so that we have right feeling and right thought at all times, that is the resolution to all our problems. So when we look at things piecemeal, it seems like so many multiple problems and you have to work at every little problem. But if you look at the big picture, you find this is the root which I have to work on. So I need to work on right understanding so that I can then guide, you know, in light of these higher activities that I am awakening to, I can guide the lower activities all the time. Then that possibility of continuity of happiness is there. And this is the not a piecemeal small solution to individual problems, but rather a focus on the resolution to the problem or resolution of all problems, you can say. So that we are able to um, you know, focus on how I want to be my natural state rather than trying to focus on how to get rid of this problem, that problem, that problem. As an example, this is in the self, but as an example, in the body, supposing we find, you know, there is this problem, now I'm developing diabetes, I must keep checking blood sugar, Oh, blood pressure seems to be going up. I have to keep checking blood pressure. Then the doctors say that every year you get all these tests done because you don't know what is going wrong in the body. So uh, where is my focus here? My focus is on the problems. And I'm trying to solve these problems bit by bit. I'm not looking at the body as a whole. I'm not looking at how to take care of the health of the body. My focus has become disease and how to correct the disease. So rather than that, if I shift my focus to looking holistically and looking at the whole body, not just as the body, but as an instrument of myself and taking charge, taking responsibility for the body, then I can see a new way I can focus on the health of the body so that these small issues don't come up at all. That problem doesn't show up at all because I'm able to sort out the things right at the beginning, even before they can emerge as a problem. So similarly, you can have, you know, we can work for right understanding in the self so that we can look at things holistically, we can resolve things, have the resolution with this holistic view, and then we have clarity of what to do further. So if you look at this resolution, we had talked about this, if you recall, from 3.1 to 3.9, all these points have been given. So once we have, or we, were, we are working for the right understanding, once we have this right understanding, with this, now it becomes clear what is our goal. Before we 
were just looking outside and we kept shifting our goals. No? Now I have to do this, I have to work, um, or I have to pass my exam, then I have to finish school, I have to go to college. From college, what is my goal? I have to get good marks and I must get a good job, good pay. Then when I come to the work, then, oh, I need to get promotion from time to time. I must have research articles. I must do this. So my goal keeps shifting. And I think that is it. And life passes me by and I'm carrying on with these goals. But if we are working for right understanding, we have the clarity. We have the wisdom about what is our human goal. What is our purpose here? Why are we here? Is it only for this or something more than this? That wisdom, this clarity of what our goal is, that becomes something very obvious. And with that, we work on how to go about fulfilling that human goal. So all this we keep getting clarity on when we are working for right understanding, when we are trying to awaken the higher activities, because slowly they are the ones that are guiding the lower activities. So then that how to go about it, that becomes more and more clear. And with that, I start working outside. Outside meaning? Till now, it was going on within me. No, the understanding is within the self. The wisdom identifying the goal is within the self. How to go about doing it? You know, I have to plan everything, how, how to achieve this. All that is still in the self. Then with that, now I work outside. So in my behavior, in my interaction with other human beings, I'm able to bring this into practice. When I work with nature, I am able to bring it into practice. I am able to ensure not just, you know, when I work, when I interact with other human beings, I am able to ensure not just my happiness with the interaction, but also I ensure the happiness of the other. I have concern for the happiness of the other. I am looking for mutual happiness. When I'm working with nature, I'm not just concerned about my prosperity. I'm also making sure that nature gets enriched in the process because there also I see my role, my participation. And in fact, in every activity, when I'm working for society everywhere, I see this circle becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Right now, I may have this small limited area where I think my responsibility is my immediate family. So we are husband, wife and children and this is my responsibility. At most, maybe aged parents are there so I must help them. But as my awareness grows, as I'm able to awaken to the higher activities, I see my role, I see my relatedness with everybody not just these with whom I am connected by the body. So I start seeing my relationship with my neighbors, my friends, my colleagues, people who you know, are interacting with me at home, at work, anybody that I interact with, I see my relatedness with them. So slowly, my circle of um, inclusiveness becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And I keep participating in the next larger order and the next larger and the next larger. And ultimately, we want to go all the way so that it's not just my neighborhood, it's not just my community, it's not just my religion, it's not just my state. It's not just my country, it's everybody. So we have ultimately, we can see 
our role in an undivided human society with the universal human order and this once it is achieved then that possibility one can see of the human tradition in which this goal can be fulfilled time after time it becomes a cycle so it is you know the condition is set right for this generation this generation takes care of making sure that the environment is right for the next generation and that can continue the wheel starts rolling then and the cycle can be there in completion it can keep going so all this is possible so when we talk of right understanding so it is not my understanding your understanding somebody else's understanding it is not right understanding about this problem or that problem when we talk of right understanding we are talking of seeing everything the way it is so who is trying to understand who is trying to know it is the self what do i really want to know about you no know, what do we mean when we say right understanding we want to know everything there is to know if you see a small child they are so curious why 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 they want to know all the answers you tell them so and so will tell me when will they tell me what will they tell me you know? then you say oh the, this answer you will know when we grow up when will i grow up because they want to know everything now now because this is our nature we have a need for happiness we have a need to know and we want to know about everything in detail every possible detail ultimately that is our quest so we spoke of the knowledge of the human being little bit now we are going to talk about the existence and then ultimately we'll come to the knowledge of human conduct in the next module so in this process of understanding moving towards knowing what is happening we are slowly awakening to the higher activities if you look at when we where we start from the lowest activity in the self selecting tasting na yeah? our focus is largely outside there is no guidance from within how do we see things we are looking at the form so if you look outside you might see some trees there So now if you look at the trees what do you see you see you are sitting in the room and you see the tree is outside there is a gap between you and the tree when you see you are looking at the form of the tree it has a certain shape isn't it is that how we see so yes so we are looking at things in an isolated manner everything there is a question uh, by bali ji reddy what is congruence it was there in the last slide well congruence between you know what i can see as my human goal on the basis of right understanding that you know is it in alignment with this ultimately what i do outside congruence means this alignment is it there or not this i have to keep checking i hope that's clear just a different word for the same thing we are saying so now if you see this 
way of looking at things. So, even with our own family members, what do we see? You know, who is who are you, and who is the other? You see your form. In the mirror, you see your form, and you say, "Okay, this is me." You see the other person, the form of the other person. You say that is them. Again, you see some gap between the two, isn't it? So you are seeing separate, separate individual forms with some gaps in between. Whether it be trees, whether it be animals, whether it be human beings, whether it be whatever it is. Can you see that? Isn't that how it is? So, this is how we are looking at things when we are just awakened to selecting and tasting. That everything is separate. There is some gap between the things. So obviously now, what am I going to look at it as? I am wherever my body limit is there. I say that is me, isn't it? Anything beyond the limit of my body, I say that is not me, right? Isn't that how we do? Yes. So I see it like that. Now, suppose. I tell you, lift your hand up in front of you. You can lift up your left or the right. Okay, lift your right, right hand up in front of you. Look at the fingers. Look at the thumb. Look at the outline of the arm. You say, this is me. And around it, there is some gap. Air is there, whatever is there. There is some gap. So you say, this is me and the part of the gap where I don't see my form, that is not me, isn't it? Now, suppose we had to look at this very microscopically. If we had a very sharp microscope, what would we see? So what you will see is this outline, this form, where the limit of your hand is where the limit of your fingers is. If you look at it through a microscope, you will see that that skin has many pores, isn't it? It's not separate, isolated from everything else. There are many pores, passages, you can say. And there is a lot of activity happening. You will notice that also, if you see under a very strong, say an electron microscope or not. You will see that so many microorganisms are going in and out, in and out, in and out. Now what do you say? Who is me and who is not me? Right now there is a bug just outside the limit of my body. I say that is not me. Now it enters my body. Now I say it is me. Can you see? So much of a difference it makes. So now you will notice that there seems to be like a continuum. It's not like a closed form with no interaction of the outside. There is, in fact, it's a very live process going on. And this is not just with me and my immediate family member. This is with Everything in this existence. You see the, you know, plants. They are giving out something. I am taking in something. In the daytime, they are giving out oxygen. I am consuming that oxygen. It's going into me. Now you see a different picture. No? Now we are not like separate isolated things, units. Now there is some connection you can see. So as we keep going from the lowest to the higher activities, we see more and more. So at selection and tasting, 
we are largely focused on the form, how it looks, the shape, and so on. When we go to the next level, and we are seeing the analyzing and the comparing part through that, then we start seeing the impact of one unit on another unit. So in this impact of one unit on the other unit, we are able to see the property of that unit. So for instance, you know, the sun comes up, it warms the skin. You are outside and the sun is up. You feel the warmth of the sun on your skin. So it is having some impact on you. So similarly like this, there is impact of every unit on every other unit. Some property is there. So we start focusing on that. We analyze, we compare, we get the you know, information about this. So now we see that it's not just that these are separate isolated forms. There is some impact also. There is some effect of one unit on another unit. This we can see at that level. Then as we awaken to the activity of contemplation within us, we are able to see something more. If there's any question, you can just... Uh, um, you know, raise your hand, otherwise I will keep going. Usually science we means knowing the truth, but something else is written in the slide, previous slide. Science. Don't go by the words, try to understand what is being talked of. What, what is your question? That science is to fulfill human goal. Hmm. Usually science means knowing the truth uh, 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 it depends, no? Right now, what we talk of as science, we say everything is material. Is it really knowing the truth? So we are using some words. The words are an indicator to what is meant by it. Try to focus on what we are meaning for it. Because there will be many words. Many people will use many different words. Isn't it? How do we decide? We decide when we can see the reality by ourselves. That seeing the reality by ourselves, we have referred to it as right understanding. We have been saying that for a while now. No? So oh. try to focus on the meaning that we are talking of here. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so coming back to, we were talking of awakening to the activity of contemplation. So when we awaken to the activity of contemplation, now we start seeing this relatedness. Not just that there are certain forms, not just that there is impact of one form on another form, but now we see that there is a definite relatedness. Like we were mentioning, you know, this relatedness between the tree and myself. So the tree is giving out, in the daytime it is giving out some oxygen. I'm consuming that oxygen. I'm giving out carbon dioxide. The tree is consuming that. Can you see? So there is some relatedness. And slowly when we start looking at the, you know, all the units, we start seeing this relatedness is there between all the units. This is what we are calling the natural characteristic. Relatedness is there and this unit is playing a definite role. It has a definite participation in the existence. It's not just there as a separate entity. It is there, it has a natural characteristic, meaning it has a certain participation. It has a role 
in this existence and it is participating. I start seeing that. Then as I awaken to the activity of um, you know, this understanding, then I am now looking at how every unit in this existence is already complete. It's already self-organized. It's not that somebody has to keep doing something with it. It's already there. It's complete in itself. If you look at a single cell organism, we've all studied about the amoeba and all, amoeba protozoa. It is complete in itself. Only one single cell, it is functioning. Everything is working fine. Then you see bigger and bigger units with more and more cells. Now all these cells are there in, you know, say if you take a plant, there are so many plant cells. They are independently also working, doing their own thing, what they need to do. But you can see that there is some harmony with all the other cells that are there in that unit. So they are working in harmony with other units. So if you look at the body, the human body, now there are trillions of cells. It's a very complex thing. All these trillions of cells are working together and they are doing it in a way that it is for the larger good of the whole body as a whole. So that there is harmony in the, this big unit, the body. Until, of course, I start interfering with that and I do some, you know, make, um, make some decisions without understanding and then disrupt the harmony in the body. But largely, if you see, even in small children when they are born, majority of babies, you will find that they are very healthy. How is it happening? It's there. It's just, this is the innateness of the unit. It's already self-organized. It's already there as a harmony in the whole unit. And ultimately, when we awaken to the activity of realization, we can directly see the coexistence, not just in thought, not just as information, but we will directly be able to see, not through these gross eyes, but from within. We'll be able to see the space. And that I can see is the basis for all this, what I am seeing as the existence, that this relatedness is there, you know, the natural characteristic of every unit, the participation is there, that every unit is so well organized, it is self-organized, and all these units are working together in Things are happening in a harmony. So we keep giving this example of the forest. You see so many um, trees, shrubs, grasses, they are there in harmony. You see trees, there are birds sitting on the trees. There is, all this is already in harmony. All these units are, you know, going with a certain harmony. Things are already happening. This relatedness, this innateness, all of this now, when I awaken to the activity of realization, then I see that the basis for this is that all these units are actually submerged in space. Now that gap that I saw between the units, now there is no gap like that. There is a connectivity between the units that is this space. And I can see this space directly. 
Now my whole perception changes. It's like a light has dawned, you know, something new. Things outside are the same, but now my whole view of things has changed. So the change has happened in me because I can perceive the reality the way it is, not in the way that I was perceiving it before. So any observations or questions so far? We can take them. You find that every unit in this existence has a role to play, is significant, is important. But when we don't understand things, we try to decide for ourselves what is important, what is not important. And we see things from our limited perspective of the human being. And we think, okay, this is important for me, this is not important for me. Bees, what do they do? They just irritate, they interfere, they bite. So we try to get rid of the bees. But bees, if the bees are not there, pollination doesn't happen. Pollination doesn't happen. So many things, so many species will die out. Species die out, then you know, my food, it's coming from there. Eventually you find that your own survival becomes a question mark. You may not be able to survive because those bees are not there. And this has been worked at, looked at scientifically also, isn't it? Studies have been done. That is where the awareness grew of the importance, significance of bees. Similarly, we create problems here and there. You know, we feel, okay, you know, this kind of fruit, it's exotic. It's not available in my country. Let me bring from the other country and plant it here. And we try all these things. Some things are manageable. Some things disrupt the whole system the balance. So you, do, you make some decisions and then you find that, you know, you, until and unless you have an understanding of the whole, we will keep making mistakes because we see a very limited view. Isn't it? So, any thoughts on this? Any questions regarding this? Ma'am, uh, here it is process of understanding. And within that, uh, the understanding word is repeating. Process of understanding. Within that, contemplation, understanding, and realization. Yeah. What is your question? So, uh, uh, so uh, one one thing in order to explain one thing, uh, the same word is uh, used. So what so is it the question? I didn't understand what you are asking. That in you... the red red is a rectangle, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So there it is in process of understanding. Okay, so, process of right understanding. Call it that. Uh -huh. Knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Then yes. it's so. Namaskar, Didi. Namaste. Mm, Didi, that means the harmony, balance, and uh, connectivity in nature. It is uh, because of the self-regulation within the unit and uh, because of the relationship and participation with one another. Is, yeah. Is it? Okay. And if you see the relationship, if you see the participation, if you see the self-organization, and you go to ask, why is that? Hmm. Then you see it is because of the submergence of all the units in space. So ultimately, being in space, this is how it is. Yeah. yeah. What is there in space that everything gets uh, self-regulated and 
uh, it comes in harmony and relationship. That is the beauty. That is what we are all trying to find out. <laughs> mm-hmm. We need to be able to directly observe the space. Yes. Something, okay. some, some um, suspense should be left, you know. Yes. Something to motivate us to go further. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that is how it is, you know. Being in space, everything is self-organized. We talk of that. We'll come to that also. Na? How everything is energized, self-organized, has this relatedness. It's just there, being in space. That's how it is. Namaste, ma'am. Namaste to all. Uh, ma'am, in uh, research, uh, while doing a research, uh, particularly uh, we are playing with the material. Uh, as a human being, to improve the performance of a material, uh, like uh, maybe the plastic, polymers, rubber, etc. So we add one material to other and... Uh, so we thought to improve that performance, like a strength of that material, mechanical strength, etc. So that is how we are uh, playing, ma'am. Uh, mm-hmm. So while listening this lecture, uh, so we are not uh, accepted uh, the things naturally available as it is. Uh, with our knowledge, with the uh, uh, scientific knowledge, we want to... Uh, change that uh, properties time is almost up yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so the thing is see we it's not that we don't mm. develop it's not that we don't go forward technology can do marvel mm. you have been able to create marvel no many solutions mm. have been found with technology but mm. If we have this technology and we have that understanding in the base, then we can have mm-hmm. true marvels without disrupting anything. Otherwise, right now, it is just uh, indefinite. No, Some things may work. Some things we may be spoiling other things mm-hmm. and because we don't see the big picture. So we need the whole picture. And certainly science is important. Certainly skills are important. Certainly technology advancement is important. We can work towards it, but also keeping this bigger picture in view. And we can take the cue from the existence, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. If there's more on this uh, question on this, we'll discuss it tomorrow. So we'll reflect on this for today. Time is up. And uh, I'll put an assignment in the group also.